殺される Song Jin Wu, considered the weakest hunter in the world, enters a dungeon gate with his friend Li Ju He and other stronger hunters. After the boss is killed, the gate does not collapse, but instead reveals a second connected dungeon. The party is split evenly on whether or not to proceed. Jin Wu casts the tiebreaker to send them down into the second half of the double dungeon. The party finds the dungeon empty save for a large room filled with statues, which come alive and begin slaughtering the hunters. Jin Wu realizes that the dungeon they are in has specific rules by which to survive the statues. First, to revere God, second, to praise God, and finally, to prove your faith to God. Several hunters are killed as Jin Wu and the senior hunter leading the party, Song Chi Yul, slowly manage to decipher the instructions on how to survive. Finally, only Chi Yul, Ju He, and Jin Wu are left, and Jin Wu tells Chi Yul to evacuate with Ju He while he holds the door. Left alone, Jin Wu rages against his imminent death. However, as he dies, he receives a message that he has completed the hidden quest and may become a player if he accepts the offer. Jin Wu wakes up after three days asleep, initially thinking he might have dreamed the events of the double dungeon. Investigators from the Hunters Association explain that it really did happen. Ju He is traumatized while Chi Yul is reportedly retiring after losing his arm. And check to see if Jin Wu experienced the very rare Second Awakening, in which a hunter will experience an increase in ability. The test comes back negative. Jin Wu discovers a message like the one that declared him a player with daily goals to hit and a penalty for failing to complete them. After skipping the first day and nearly dying when thrown into a penalty quest, Jin Wu begins completing each day's goal. He receives stat bonuses and loot boxes, which results in him receiving a special item, an instance dungeon key. He enters and is confronted by a wolf monster stronger than anything he had fought before. Jin Wu successfully kills the wolf and gains a level. More appear and he continues through the dungeon, killing more and more and gaining more strength before defeating the dungeon's boss. Meanwhile, outside the instance, a dungeon break occurs, allowing a golem to enter the real world. Arriving hunters, including a PTSD-stricken Ju He, fail to deal any damage. Emerging from the instance, Jin Wu is guided to the battle and throws his broken sword into the golem boss, shattering its defense and allowing the gathered hunters to take it down. He departs, reflecting that the golem must have been more injured than he'd expected. Jin Wu joins C-rank hunter Huang Dong Suk and his five associates in a pickup group to tackle a C-rank insect dungeon with the contract stipulating that Jin Wu doesn't have to fight, but won't get any battle drops. Jin Wu becomes suspicious of Dong Suk's motives due to the situation. Rounding out the eight-member requirement to enter the dungeon is first-timer D-rank Yu Jin Ho, whose family wealth has gotten him equipped with very expensive and powerful gear. After the hunters defeat a wave of monster ants, they find the dungeon boss, a giant sleeping spider in a room with highly valuable minable mana crystals. Jin Ho reviews Jin Wu's contract and notes that since the crystals aren't battle drops, Jin Wu should get a full share. In retaliation, Dong Suk and his party spring their plan to keep everything and trap Jin Wu and Jin Ho in the boss room, waking up the spider in the process. Jin Wu prepares to kill the dungeon boss. Jin Wu successfully defeats the boss, much to Jin Ho's shock. When Dong Suk and his group re-enter the boss room, he attempts to coerce Jin Ho into killing Jin Wu, but Jin Ho refuses. Jin Wu receives a new quest to kill Dong Suk's group under penalty of death, leading him to massacre them. He exits the dungeon with Jin Ho, using the cover story of the others having been slain by the dungeon monsters. 
Jin Ho offers Jin Wu a building in exchange for his help in fulfilling requirements for guild certification. Jin Wu rejects the offer. Jin Wu notices his daily mission keeps incrementing past the requirements. Upon maxing it out, he is rewarded with another instance key, this time to an S-rank dungeon that rewards a special potion that can heal any illness. Jin Wu realizes it can cure his mother and decides to risk it. The first battle within the dungeon is against a Guardian Cerberus, which nearly kills Jin Wu multiple times before he finally manages to slay the beast. His reward is the key to the castle, Cerberus was guarding, within which is the ingredients he needs to craft the potion. Knowing he would die if he pressed on, he promises himself to return later and succeed. Meanwhile, the Hunters Association investigates the death of Dong Suk after learning the dungeon boss was defeated. Dong Suk's younger brother, the S rank Dong Su, blames Jin Wu and Jin Ho and swears revenge. Jin Wu visits his comatose mother and decides to push forward with getting stronger so that he can get the needed ingredients to save her. He thus accepts Jin Ho's request to aid in running dungeons to allow creation of a guild. To fulfill the party member requirement for C rank dungeons, the Hunters Association recruits the survivors of the Double Dungeon Raid, and due to a shortage of hunters in the area, the group is rounded out by several imprisoned hunters, who serve in exchange for reduced sentences that are overseen by B rank Kang Taishik. At a three way junction, the group splits up. Kang uses the separation to murder the prisoners at the behest of their victim's father, and when Jongo and Sangshik's path leads them to stumble upon the scene, Kang kills them to cover it up. Jin Wu, Ju He, and Chi Yul race back to the scene and confront Kang, and Jin Wu reveals his newfound power to kill Kang. A grateful Chi Yul covers for Jin Wu. Later that night, Ju He asks Jin Wu if he remembers holding up a small essence stone. Ju He tells Jin Wu she is retiring as a hunter and to look her up if he ever finds himself at her home. Jin Ho buys the dungeon rights for multiple C rank dungeons and recruits low ranked hunters to fill dungeon requirements, while Jin Wu and Jin Ho are the only ones who go in to clear them. The White Tiger Guild's recruiting manager notices Sung Jin Wu's name and puts the pieces together that Jin Wu must have reawakened. He attempts to recruit Jin Wu, but fails. Jin Wu receives a message. Having achieved a level requirement, he is now offered a job change quest. Jin Wu starts the job change quest and is teleported to a massive castle. After fighting through waves of knights, assassins, and mages, he confronts Igris, the Blood Red Knight commander. Igris is every bit as powerful and more so than Jin Wu, who only barely manages to slay the knight. The actual job change quest activates, unleashing an unending horde of the monsters he'd fought on the way to Igris's chamber. Meanwhile, the S-rank hunters of Korea gather and head for Jeju Island, years ago the site of an S-rank dungeon break. Overwhelmed by the seemingly endless horde and recalling his prior circumstances, Jin Woo nearly despairs before deciding to press forward. The timer for the daily quest expires and he is transferred to a penalty zone, which he uses to recover and prepare himself. Returned to the castle, he succeeds in defeating first the Horde. As a reward, he gains the title Shadow Monarch and the ability to bring the dead back to life as his Shadow Army. Meanwhile, the S-Rank Hunters make a horrifying discovery. The Jeju Island S-Rank monsters have begun to evolve and threaten to spread to the mainland. 